right, we'll go ahead and get started in the service this morning. Let me welcome everybody in church, and good to see you this morning. And I'll tell you from my part, I want to say I appreciate everybody praying for us. And it's a, uh, the first Sunday we've got to be back after the uh, throat surgery, and I thank the Lord for that. And then thank God for people who got all kind of messages and stuff like that. And I had to learn how to text, amen. And some of you might see R's and U's and stuff like that. But, I, hey, I appreciate the messages as people's call and text and praying for us. And I'll tell you, you don't, you don't know how to appreciate church till you have to be out a few weeks, amen. And uh, so I'm glad to be back in the house of God this morning. Good to see all of you here and appreciate you being in church. And uh, it's good to have Brother Sidney Weaver and his dear wife and family with us this morning. And we need to pray for Brother Sidney. Uh, good, Bryce, good to have you too, son. Amen. And, yeah, and the two kids, the two kids. And let's pray for Brother Sidney. His mother just got promoted to heaven, uh, passed away, and I'm sure his heart is heavy, and, and we need to pray for them. God to give him grace, and he was so gracious just to come on and preach for us, amen, today. So let's pray God to just use him in a mighty way. Now, the Lord willing, we're going to go through Wednesday night. Uh, Evangelist Cody Zorn, he'll be with us starting tomorrow night and go through Wednesday night in revival. So I'm praying God will really do something, amen, uh, this week in revival. And, hey, let's pray. Uh, we're, we're in a good spot for God to do something. There's so much going on in the world, amen, a lot of stuff going on in the world. But wouldn't it be uh, good if God just sat down here a few days, amen, and shined upon us? And uh, so let's pray about that. And I'm going to go ahead and mention a couple of prayer requests. Uh, let's remember Miss Karen Griffin had knee replacement surgery. Uh, she's at home doing good. We tried to uh, call her, and y'all pray. She's just, uh, you know, got a long process of rehab, so let's pray the Lord to touch her and help her. Also, preacher Tommy Hayes, let's pray for Brother Tommy. I uh, talked to him this past week. He's been taking treatments, and uh, he told me this. He said the cancer doctor told him that they're going to uh, not do no more treatments on him, that his body would not be able to take the treatment. And uh, so y'all pray for Preacher Tommy. That's where he's at. Uh, he's got this pancreatic cancer. And uh, so y'all just pray God to touch him and help him, boy, good man of God, and pray the Lord to help him. Also, Brother Steve Ellenberg. Let's keep Brother Steve in our prayers. Pray God to help him and be with him. Uh, Miss Jan's having to help with him, so y'all pray for them. Brother Danny mullen has got one more treatment left, so y'all pray for Brother Danny. He's done well uh, with these treatments and stuff, so y'all pray the Lord to touch his body and help him. God certainly uh, knows his need. Let's remember Miss Stephanie Dobbins has a lot of trouble with her back, so let's pray God to touch her body and help her. The Lord uh, knows her need. Also, a lot of people, I'm, I'm not going to try to call the names, but there's a lot of people that's got this virus and stuff. We need to pray for them. Pray God to uh, help them. Amen. I'm praying that, uh, you know, they'll be able to get a vaccine soon and this stuff will settle down, but it seems like right now it's not. But let's just pray for all these folks that's been affected by it and uh, pray God to just touch them and help them. Remember Brother Dave Nations, one of our deacons, uh, he'll be going to the end of this week having a couple of tests run. So y'all pray for Brother David. Pray the Lord to touch him and help him. Uh, let's remember Neil Ferguson uh, that has leukemia to pray for this dear man. And also Brenda told me a while ago that Ron uh, had stepped on something there and possibly uh, messed his Achilles up there and on his heel. So let's pray for Ron Rogers. Pray God to touch him and help him. Amen. Pray for revival. And listen, let's pray for our country. Y'all know Tuesday is election day. And I, hey, I've done already voted. A lot of people's already voted. And that's a good thing. But I want to encourage you as your pastor, uh, I believe it's our civic duty, and thank God that uh, we live in America where we can vote. So I want to say this, hey, if you have to stand in line a little while or whatever you have to do to vote, vote. Amen. Probably one of the most important elections uh, in our lifetime. So we need to vote, and you vote like everything depends on us and pray like it all depends on God. Amen. So let's just pray God's will to be done. All right, has anybody else this morning got anybody sick? Bryce, you got a prayer request, son? Well, anyway, Nanny has a appointment. Oh, okay, his nanny's got an appointment. All right, let's pray for that. All right, does anybody else? Anybody else got a request? Boy, well, we pray, sister. Passed away. Okay, all right, let's pray for that family bereavement there. Pray the Lord to help them. All right, does anybody else? Before we pray, got anybody that's sick or Brother Brian? All right, let's pray Brother Brian's wife, Miss Tony, Brother Donnie. All right, let's remember Miss Diane, too. Yeah, Diane's not feeling well, so let's pray for her. 
All right. Is anybody else? Sister, you have another one? Okay, need a kidney transplant. All right, let's pray for this dear, pray for this dear brother. God to touch him and help him. Samuel. All right, let's pray for Sam's son Dylan. God knows his need. Amen. All right, is anybody else before we pray? Anybody else? Kaylee. Okay, Kaylee's uncle, all right. Let's remember to pray for him. All right, is anybody else? Okay, some of Diane's kin people, all right. Let's pray for them. Got the virus as well. Pray for them. All right, is anybody else? All right, let's pray. Sean, how about you open us up in prayer if you don't mind? Oh, my. My, my. Praise the Lord. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So many heavy hearts. Sure. Oh, my. Sure. Sure. Oh, my. A lot of people sick, God. You got cancer. Different things. Your brother needing a kidney. I pray for him. Oh, my. God bless the man of God. I know his heart to be heavy. Yes. Sure. Amen. But what about that? Yeah, be vigilant. Oh, my. Sure. Oh, my. Yes. Yeah. Or not look back. That's right. Sure. Sure. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Lord, encourage your heart. God, encourage them. No. Sure. Be steadfast. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, my. Sure. God bless Brother Sidney and Brother Zorn. Bless these men of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Sean. Brother Dean, you come around. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, before we sing, uh, I want to throw out a challenge to all of you. Uh, this morning is the beginning of our revival services. And no doubt in my mind, it, uh, Brother Sidney, Brother Cody, I'm sure they've prayed up and they've got the messages on their heart that God wants them to preach here. But we're only going to get out of this revival what we ask for. That's right. And if we want revival, we need to pray for it. God wants to give it to us, but God wants us to ask him for it. So let's pray. Let's pray for one another this week. Let's pray for our church. Let's pray that God will revive our church and revive our hearts. Listen, you may not admit it, but I will. I need revival. I need revival. I need help from the Lord. So let's pray God, Pray and ask God to send it to us, okay? Let's all stand. Page 150, we'll sing all three verses. When I was drifting out in sin, I had no peace, no joy within, but Jesus came and made 
made me glad The dearest friend I ever had He saved my soul Oh, bless his name I'll never forget The day he came He makes me glad my soul, oh bless his name, I'll never forget the day he came, he makes me glad when I am saved, the dearest friend I ever had, oh sinner come to Jesus now, at his dear feet just humbly by. Save your soul and make you glad. The dearest friend I ever had. He saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad when I am saved. The dearest friend I ever had. Bow. He'll save your soul and make you glad. The dearest friend I ever had, he saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad. seated. If he's your friend, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord for that. I'll tell you, Denny, let's do this right quick before we get the offering. I know we got some birthdays here this morning. Amen. If you had a birthday this past week, I want you to stand up. If you had a birthday, has anybody had a birthday? I know somebody did. KK, we know she's a teenager. Anybody else? All right, we got one right there. We got a birthday. Stand up, dear sister. All right, anybody else? A All right, what about an anniversary? Have we had anybody had an anniversary? Amen. Uh, yeah, Adam and Tasha's out of town this week on their anniversary, amen, so let's pray for them. All right, let's sing happy birthday to these folks. Let's all stand saying happy birthday. seated let's have our ushers come forward you men come forward and we'll go ahead amen receive our morning tithes and offerings and boy i'm telling you i'm just so excited to be back at church this morning boy good to be back in the house of god and i thank the lord for it and uh let me mention this brother chad we're still doing visitations is that right this afternoon at 3 p.m so don't forget that amen and let me say this if you've got somebody that you want us to visit, you get with Brother Chad. If somebody's out of church or somebody you know is not saved, hey, if you'll get us a name and an address, we'll go see them. Amen. Don't forget these revival flyers. I always appreciate Miss Shirley. She does a good job with this. Got revival flyers on the front table. Hey, I've done took some and put them in some businesses and stuff like that. You feel sure, uh, feel free to get these, put them in businesses, amen, and pray for revival. We're excited about what God's going to do, amen. All right, let's pray over the offering. John, John, won't you pray over the offering? Sure, sure. God bless Brother Sidney. Help him. Sure. Amen. Amen, amen.
Y'all pray for us. We're going to try to sing this morning. Amen. Bless my one. Two. Touch me again. <coughs> Amen. People bring in Brother Sidney. Sometimes there's some benefits to getting sick. Somebody say amen. Huh? <laughs> hey, I, I enjoyed the meals. I ain't lying to you. I enjoyed the meals. And thank God for the good fellowship. Good to have evangelist Sidney Weaver. He's my friend and his dear wife and family. You give him your undivided attention. I want to say this about Brother Sidney. Every time I've ever heard this man preach, I've got something from the Word of God. So you open up your ears and open up your heart and let God speak to our heart this morning. Preacher, good to have you. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. <clears throat> the book of Action, chapter number 17, Amen. verses 1 through 4. Action, chapter number, I'm sorry, you may know it as the book of Acts. Yes. Or in some of the Bibles it says the Acts of the Apostles. But I, in my Bible it is the book of Action because if you read this book, you'll find out that the Savior went up, the Spirit came down, the saints went out, and the sinners came in. It's truly a book of action. Y'all have ever seen me preach, you know why I'm going to move this cup of water. 
But let me say, Pastor and First Lady, the members of Victory Baptist Church, thank you so much for allowing me and my family to be part of this revival effort. I pray that the Lord will truly touch us again. Begin revival and begin it in my heart. I need it. I want it. I long for it. I'm excited about it. And I appreciate each one of you for being here, allowing us to be here. And I also want to say that I thank the Lord for His presence. I'm not talking about that promised presence where He said we're two or three together. But I like it when He kicks around a little bit. I like it when He shows up and flexes, shows Himself to be God. I'm not saved by feelings. I'm saved by grace through faith. But I'm glad I got a God big enough. And He gave me a salvation big enough that every once in a while I can feel it. I don't know about you, but we're singing that congregational together. God was a showing off a little bit down inside of me. And I'm feeling mighty saved this morning. I love specials. I love choir singing and solos and quartets. But I'm convinced when we get to heaven, it'll all be congregational. And congregational music really does it for me, and especially when folks really let it go and let it sing. I can't sing, but I'm going to let it back, uh, let, let go, let it let, rear back, and let it fly. And y'all were singing that way this morning, and the Lord was pulling on the joy bells down in my heart. I'm excited to be here. I pray that God will speak to us from the pages of His Word. The book of Action, we'll be looking at verses, uh, chapter 17, verses 1 through 4. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them three Sabbath days, reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs suffer, must needs have suffered, and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. From the time I was old enough to hold a baseball bat, I've been a baseball man. I like baseball. I played it most of my life. And when I was a young teenage boy, my dad coached our baseball team. I remember on the first day of practice, my dad uh, gathered us up around the pitcher's mound and he walked out on the pitcher's mound and in one hand he had a glove and a bat. In the other hand he held a baseball. And he looked at us and he said, what has become wrong with the game of baseball is we have made it too complicated. He said, what we as a team will do this year is we will throw this ball, we will catch this ball, and we will hit this ball. We will get back to the basics of baseball and simply play ball. Now, as we live in a sin-cursed, sin-sick, selfish world all around us, and we are guilty as the church and Christian people of complicating church and Christianity. What we've done in our day is we've complicated church to where the world got churchy and the church got worldly and in a lot of places you can't tell where the world ends and the church begins. We've tried to make church suitable to a lost world and in so doing church has become so complicated and Christianity, true Christianity has been so complicated we've tried to make a Christianity that fit into this world I'm going to just go ahead and let you in on something God never called the people to fit into this world we are to be square holes of pegs trying to fit in a round hole this world is not my home you can have it and a thousand more like it my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue I don't fit in I ain't trying to fit in I'm not trying Trying to complicate church or Christianity. I believe that the answer in this day, with all that's going on, with all the sin that's running rampant, I believe the answer is we as God's people ought to just get back to the basics. 
For a few minutes, I want to preach from these verses on that simple thought. Getting back to the basics. In these verses that I've read to you, I believe that Paul gives us an example, gives us a pattern that we can follow for basic Christianity. I don't think the world needs a complicated Christianity. I think they need a basic Christianity. And we'll see in verse number 2, getting back to the basics. Verse number 2, I want us to see the basic Christian manner. Look at verse 2 with me again. And Paul, as his manner was. This was his custom. This was his way of life. This is how he always done things. Watch this now. As his manner was, went in unto them and reasoned. And three Sabbath days he reasoned with them. What he did when he first got to Thessalonica, you know what he did according to verse number 1? He goes through these cities, he walks into Thessalonica and the first place he found was the synagogue. The first place he found was the house of God. And I believe that you and I ought to be our Christian manner. That we ought to be faithful to the house of God. Now let me say I know during this pandemic we've had to change things. We've had to have church a different way. But I'm still convinced if the church meeting in a parking lot, if a meeting on the internet, if a meeting in the church building, you and I ought to be faithful to the house of God. Tuesday afternoon I buried my mother and I said at her funeral, the greatest thing my mom ever did for me in my whole life is from the moment she was expecting me until I went off into the United States Navy at 18 years old, my mother gave me drug disease. She drug me to church at some, oh, every Sunday morning for Sunday school and for preaching. Some of you young folk have to ask an older person about this one. I had to go at 6 o'clock on Sunday night to training union and 7 o'clock worship. Monday night visitation, Wednesday night praise, prayer, and Bible study. Thursday night choir practice and I can't even sing. Friday night the old men of God had meet and called it the hour of power. And my mom would take me to that uh, church and make me listen to them old men of God grab a hold of the, I mean them old men of God that knew how to grab a hold. I didn't know how good I had it sitting there listening to them pray. I mean if we rode by and the custodian had the door open and he was a cleaning up the church, my mama would stop and say run in and see if he needs any help. Find out what's going on. I believe that we ought to be faithful to the church. Now I ain't always been faithful. I ain't always been a Christian. But since God saved me, I've been faithful to the church. And the church has not just been something that's been added to my life. For 30 years, the church has been my life. I don't say, well, if I get all this done, I'm going to church. I say, I'm going to church, and then I'll try to get all this done. You want revival? Just get back to being faithful to the house of God. But he not only says that basic Christian manner was faithful, he found a synagogue, and as his manner was, he went in unto them. And for three uh, Sabbath days he reasoned with them what's this out of the scriptures a basic Christian manner is not only to be faithful to the house of God but it is to be founded on the word of God we've got away from our foundation being the word of God if we're not careful we'll turn into what I call billy goat Christian we'll say I know the Bible says that but you know, in Billy Goat Christians, they want to butt everything. I seen a bumper sticker. It said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I said, no, that ain't right. That ain't right. Sounds good, though. Don't did that sound good, but it just ain't right. Because what the truth of the matter is, if God said it, that settles it whether you believe it or not. This King James, I believe it. Yeah, go ahead and mark me down. I'm one of them old King James Bible thumpers. I believe I hold in my hand the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. It's not something to be added to my life. It is the pattern. It is the answer. It is everything I need for my life. And we have gotten away from the Bible. We have gotten away from the truth of the Word of God. We've tried to turn Christianity and church into to a business to run in the world I tell you what we ought to do we ought to just get back 
to the Word of God. Believe it like God wrote it. Preach it like God wrote it. Stand on it like God wrote it. And it'll be amazed at what God will do in your life. I, I, I told him at my mom's funeral for 30 years, basically all of my adult life, I never had anything but this book. That's all I've ever had was this book. All I could ever trust. Now, of course, the Lord, but you know what I'm saying. He gave me His Word. He speaks to me from this Word. I find strength in this Word. I find food for my soul in this Word. All I've ever had is this Word, and I ain't never went without. I ain't never been hungry a day. I ain't never been forsaken. I ain't never been left all alone. I, I ain't never been left in my storm. I, I've never had God to walk away from me. I've never pulled this book out, and God didn't say, people say, well, God, no, He ain't speaking to me. Open this book. I promise you, you'll come across something look like it's wrote in six, eight inch letters and God will speak to you from the pages of this book. Paul's whole ministry, Paul's whole mission uh, life, Paul's whole outreach was based on being faithful to the house of God uh, and founded on the word of God. You want to have revival right now? Run through your life and find the places in your life that are not founded on this book. Cut them away and you'll already be having revival. It's just the basic Christian manner. Yeah, I'm old Bible. Yeah, I'm one of them old Bible thumpers. Yeah, I just believe the Bible. But it uh, don't matter. What about this verse? Do you understand that? Not exactly. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to believe it. I'm just going to believe it. I ain't going to try to write it away, explain it away. I ain't going to try to say that I'm smarter than God. I'm just going to believe it just like God wrote it. Because I'm going fi- to be founded on the way it was his Christian manner. As we move on to verse number 3. He alleged and reasoned with them out of the scripture, uh, opening and alleging, watch this, that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. Not only do we see the basic Christian manner, but I see in verse 3 the basic Christian message. Now I'm going to tell you what's wrong in a lot of churches. We've got away from the preaching of the cross. So let me go ahead, and any of you don't know this, go ahead and clear it right up right now before I go any farther. I'm one of them. I'm one of them old slaughterhouse gospel preachers. I'm one of them blood-soaked salvation guys. I believe without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I, I believe they beat him, uh, and by his stripes he healed uh, what could not be healed in my soul, in my spirit. I believe he wore a crown of thorns. Uh, I believe that they embarrassed him and slapped him and spit upon him. But the Bible said uh, that he must needs suffer. The basic Christian message is about the must of Jesus' work. It ain't about how big a church we got. It ain't about how many degrees we have behind there. As my pastor, you say you can have enough degrees behind your name to bust a thermometer. But the basic truth is we need to get the back to preaching the must of Christ's work. It was a must that Christ suffer was the only one who could suffer. He not only died for me, but he died as me. He took my place. He is the only one that could suffer and bear all our sins. The glory to God. Uh, I don't know if that's a help in you this morning, but it's a help in me to know that I was a no account white trash mill hill boy born on the wrong side of the track and the God of glory left the angelic praises, laid aside his diadems, took off his robe and said no Nobody else can do it. But I love him so much that I'll go do it. I'll suffer because in his suffering he satisfied the righteousness of a thrice holy God. He paid a debt I owed and he didn't owe it. I couldn't pay it. And he said I'll go pay it. And he paid it with his blood and with his body. He must need suffer to satisfy a righteous God. I'm sick and tired and fed up above my eyebrows of hearing these preachers act like you and I can do something to satisfy God. You're nothing. I'm nothing. And the only claim to fame I got this morning is Jesus Christ saved me. And he put me in his family. And he imputed unto me his righteousness. Nothing good about me save Jesus Christ. I just get, I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, I was sitting six pews back on the preacher's right hand side. I went to church that Sunday morning wasn't looking for God. Didn't have God on my mind. We was going to go to a family reunion. 
You know what was on my mind? Fried chicken, banana pudding, and playing pickup baseball. <laughs> I can't tell you one hymn that we sang. I can't tell you one choir song. I do not even remember who sang a special or if there were, was one. Now I can tell you that old man of God that was preaching, I know who he was. He is a walking on pews. He is a spitting and a stomping. He is a pointing that long three foot finger in everybody's face. His hair was hanging. He combed it back. And his hairspray wasn't what it is now. And there's a hanging down in his face. I, he was a scaring the kids. Uh, he is a making the old uh, uppity class mad. I mean walking on the backs of the pews. And he come down uh, and he ran down the aisle. We just had two Set of pews, one aisle. He ran down that center aisle. I can remember it. I've been thinking about it this week. And he stopped at that sixth pew. And he didn't even look over there at me. And he was a screaming like a wild man. His head was a shaking, spit was a flying. Uh, our sweat was a bouncing everywhere. And uh, he was a preaching and he stutter stepped. And he went down about six more pews. And when he moved out beside that sixth pew, the Holy Ghost stepped in it. I was sitting in the middle. I don't sit in the middle anymore because of this. I was sitting in the middle. And the Holy Ghost stepped in and pulled the blinders off my eyes. Now, I come from an old mill hill, redneck trash. I knew I was a sinner, but I didn't know I was one like that. And I'd heard all my life that Jesus was a Savior, but I'd never seen him like that. That old man of God was at the back of the church still preaching. Didn't nobody have to sing 16 stanzas of just as I am. I, didn't nobody have to say, I believe God's dealing with you. Would you like to come? I, they didn't have to pump and prime me like an old timey well. I got up wise and still preaching. I didn't wait on no invitation. I got up wise and preaching, kicked pocketbook time away, stepped over people's legs, made my way to an old fashioned altar, and Jesus saved me by his marvelous grace. The message is Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus Jesus saved. It is the must. He must die. He must suffer. He must rise again. The old hymn writer said it like this. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sin far away. But it was rising that he justified. It's rising, please excuse the expression. But rising, he sealed the deal. Hallelujah. And I'm only going to be saved as long as Jesus is resurrected from the dead. The message is Jesus saves and satisfies and seals. It is still the truth of this word. We need to get back to preaching the cross of Christ. I believe that Charles Haddon Spurgeon is given uh, credit for this statement. But he told a group of young preachers, he said, no matter where you take your text, no matter what your subject is, no matter what you're preaching on, just as soon as you can, cut across the grain and get to Calvary. Because the basic Christian message is that Jesus suffered and died and was buried and rose again the third day. To them that perish, that's foolishness. But to us that believe, it is the power of God. It got great-grandpa in. It got grandmama in. It got mama in. It got daddy in. It got me in. It got my children in. It still works. Get back to the basics and tell them about Jesus. The must of Christ's work. Watch the rest of verse number 3. He said that he must rise again from the dead. And that this Jesus, this one, the one that died at Calvary, that Jesus is of whom I preach unto you. The Jesus I'm preaching this morning, he is the Christ. He is Christ. Now you may not understand what that means. Not only is the basic Christian message about the, uh, the must of Jesus' work, he must need suffering. If Jesus had not died, we'd all be as sure for hell as if we was already there. The only hope, the only answer is Jesus. But I want you to see the magnitude of Jesus' worth. See, the world don't think he's worth much. And I'm afraid many churches, local churches, have got to the place where they don't think he's worth much. But Paul said, this Jesus whom I preach is Christ. Now Jesus is his saving name. The angel told Mary, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save 
His people from their sin. There's something special about that name Jesus. I may have told this here, but I'm, in a, I'm loose this morning. I'm going to tell it again. You know you can get away with saying God. The world don't seem to get mad. Nobody seems to get too upset. Because when you say God, you can be talking about any God. You know, any God, my God, your God, their God, any God. But when you say that name, Jesus, there's something about that name. There's something they don't like about it. Something that scares people. It offends them. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you in on something. One reason it offends them is he's the only one because this Jesus whom I preach is Christ. Something about that name, Jesus. I was preaching in a revival meeting. I was driving back and forth, and I was running early, believe it or not. And I don't care what anybody ever says. Pastors don't like the evangelists to be late. They may act like they do or don't say nothing about it, but they want him sitting in his place about 15 minutes at least early, and they ain't got to worry about it, and they can pray and get ready for the service. But anyway, I was running early, and I needed a couple, three items from Walmart, and I said, well, I'll run in. So I run in, got, I think it was three items, picked them up. I came up to the front. You know Walmart. 47 registers. And two of them open. One was a regular register. Nothing was 10 items or less. So I got in the 10 items or less, and I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, but I looked. There's a couple of them in front of me. I looked, and I can't count high, but I know that's more than 10. I said, man, I'm running out of time because time will get away from me, I promise you. I think i got an hour and I look again, I'm five minutes late. I said, the time will get away, i got to get out here. What am I going to do? If I could have sang, I'd have bust in the singing, but I can't sing. So I just eased up there right amongst them like I was looking at some candy or something on the side. And I just said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a lovely name, the name of Jesus. Never had a friend like Jesus. That sweetest name, Jesus. The sweetest name I ever heard. And I just worshiped for about 30 seconds. And that young lady running the cash register said, Excuse me, sir, if you'll come on up, I'll check you out. <laughs> I looked around. I said, Well, what happened to those people in front of me? He said, Well, that one forgot to pick up a prescription, that lady. And the other lady forgot to get milk and bread and said, I don't know what happened to this man. He just walked off, left cart and everything sitting there and left. So I paid for my items, run out, got in the car and went on the revival meeting. I said, praise God, I won't never wait in the Walmart line ever again. <laughs> ah, I know the answer. Hey, something about that name Jesus gets you through Walmart. Hallelujah. So time passed. I was uh, running to another meeting or something. I needed a few items. Whipped in there at Walmart. I ran back, got my items. I came up the wall, the front. You know Walmart. Forty-seven registers. Three of them open. One was self-checkout. Now listen, if you work at Walmart, thank you. Go do your job. Be the best at it. Thank you for being there so I could get my three items. But if you want me to check my stuff out, then pay you for checking it out. That ain't gonna work. I gotta get a discount, or I gotta be paid. Or I ain't working for you. And then paying you for what I did. No. The other in the regular line, there's 47 people look like in it. And then there was 10 items or less. So I eased over to 10 items or less. And I looked, this is honest. They had double buggies. I said, double buggies don't scare me. I ain't worried about double buggies because they something about that name Jesus. And I know how to get out of here. I eased up there. And I started Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a lovely name, the name of Jesus. Ain't nobody like my Jesus. The dearest friend is I ever had, his name is Jesus. Well, what I didn't notice was them two in front of me were sisters. I didn't say sisters. I said sisters. And I was right in the middle. I think I done threw both hands up. Said Jesus, Jesus, and I heard Mm-hmm. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. And I mean, they got to worshiping. You know, a sister's worshiping. If y'all don't know a sister's worshiping when she goes, then she's my friend. We got to 
worshiping right there in the middle of the th- ten items of list at Walmart. I mean, she, they was a singing, they was a swaying. I was a stomping around and shouting. I looked over at the manager and he'd start over and he'd start back. You'd have thought I had two AR-15s in my hand. He'd start at me and he'd step back. I looked up at that little old girl running the register and big old tears was a running down her face. You say, what in the world? Everybody'd stop what they was a doing and watching them three fools for Christ over there in ten items or less. You say, what in the world to call all that? I told you, there's something special about the name Jesus. It's his saving name. But he said, this Jesus whom I preach is Christ. Christ is his special name. See, not just anybody could be the Christ. They had to be anointed of God to be the Christ. They also had to be a man who could come to the hot pen of sin where I was, get down in that sin and it not affect them. They had to be a perfect man. Not just full of the Holy Ghost and imperfect. They had to be perfect to get down and sin, not touch them, not affect them. But they had to be God because the only one that could forgive me, the only one that could restore me is God. This Jesus whom I'm preaching, he's both of those. He's 100% man, and he's 100% God. He is Christ, our Messiah, our Savior, our Rescuer. And what he did uh, is he came over there in that hog pen of sin where I was. And he got down in that sin, uh, and he reached way down to get me. But that sin didn't stain him. It didn't touch him. It didn't affect him at all. And he reached down there and got with his nail-pierced hand, uh, and he got me by the hand. 100% 100% man, perfect, sinless man. And he got this old no count sinner by the hand. But he was 100% God. He never ceased to be God. And what he done, he had my hand in his hand. Then he reached back into the third heaven and he got the hand of God, right, righteous, holy, just, and uh, had every right to kill me and put me in hell. You deserved hell and the worst one God could give you. You wasn't that good. I know you think you was, but you wouldn't. Uh, you couldn't compare to a righteous, holy God. But this man, Christ, got me by the hand, unworthy as I was, sin sick as I was, deserving of hell as I was. He took me by the hand. Then being God, he reached all the way back up in the third heaven and he got a hold of God's hand. And you know what he did? Uh, He put my hand in God's hand and he reconciled us together. He's the only one could do that. He's the only answer. He's the only anointed one. He's the only Christ. And that is the Christian message for a sin-sick lost world. It was a basic Christian manner. It was a basic Christian message. Let me just say it again. Jesus plus nothing, minus nothing. Jesus. Why are you saved this morning preaching Jesus? Why are you preaching this morning Jesus? Nobody could, no one else could do it. He's the only one. He's Christ. Now in verse number four, and I'm finished, we find the basic Christian ministry. Watch this in verse four. He said, in some of them believe. Now I know our message is for the whole world. It's for everybody. Let me just go ahead and clear this up. I believe Jesus tasted death for every man. I believe that Jesus loved everybody. You can come along and tell me that he didn't love everybody and he didn't die for everybody, but you came along too late. I ain't buying into that. I believe if he could love me, listen, if he could love Jacob and he could love me, he he ain't going to turn on nobody else. He can love them too. And they died for everybody. And the message is for everybody. But our ministry is to them who believe. That's what our ministry is. Now some of you ain't going to like this. I don't give two rips of a sheet of paper what the world thinks I'm supposed to be. I don't. Because we have got caught up in this idea that we're supposed to live for God to impress the world. No. We live for God because He's who we serve. He's who we worship. I ain't trying to please a lost world. I ain't trying to please the church. I'm wanting to please Him because there's coming a day when I'm going to stand before, guess who? Not a lost world. 
not of a group of preachers. I'm going to stand before him who loved me and bought me with his own blood. And i got to look him in the face and give an account for every idle word and the way that I lived as a Christian and my ministry. And I ain't going to worry about, I ain't going to let the world tell me how I'm supposed to do it. And I ain't going to let some college, I ain't going to let some clique, I ain't going to let some group of preachers tell me. You know who's going to tell me? I'm going to let him tell me because I believe him. My faith is in him. I want to reach those that believe. Now, we don't preach this now, but you know what he told uh, him uh, disciples to do when they wouldn't receive him? And go find one that'll believe. I fish uh, sometimes with a guy who is actually a professional bass fisher. Matter of fact, we went off a little yesterday morning and fished. We was going by a place, and I said, Ho, ho, Brent, I got a bite. He said, did he eat the bait? I said, no, but he bit it. He said, we ain't looking for him. We after those that believe. We after those that believe. We'll tell it to everybody. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I figured I wasn't coming back to Brother Cody and clean it all up. I was going to go ahead and tell you, we got way too many unbelievers in our churches in positions of authority trying to run the church like a business. But Paul said, I preach Christ. I told them who Jesus was. And some of them believed. And watch this. Not only for those who believe, but for those who belong. Watch what he said. And they consorted. They joined up. They got on board. Let me just go ahead and tell you. You can tell me you're born again all you want to, but if you ain't never joined up, if you ain't never got hooked in with what God said in his house and in his word, uh, you may be saved because I don't know your heart. And you may go to heaven when you die but I'll be shocked when I see you there. It won't shock God, and it might not shock you, but I ain't going to buy into it because as soon as they, they get in trouble for it, but as soon as they believe, they consorted, they hooked up, they got in common, they became part of the family. I'm telling you that our ministry is a faith ministry. It's for those who believe, and it is a family ministry. I'm telling you the greatest thing that I ever belonged to was the family of God. I was not abused as a kid. I was not mistreated as a kid, but I was the black sheep. I was the least loved of my, all, my mother and dad's children. I always felt a little out on the out. I always felt a little outcast. I always felt I've been to big meetings where nobody knew me and nobody spoke to me and you feel a little outcast and you feel a little pushed away. But ever since that Sunday morning in July when I nailed at an old-fashioned altar and called on him, I, I ain't never felt like a second-class citizen. I ain't never felt like a second-class Christian. I ain't never felt like a second-class member of the family of God. I got in on something. I'm telling you, I may not know a lot about it, but I sure am enjoying it this morning. And I think if we're going to have revival, if we're going to reach a lost world, if we're going to see our lost family redeemed and be part of the circle of God uh, I think we're going to have to shut all of this smart Christianity and this thinking Christianity and just get back to the basics that baseball team my dad coached that year we won the league, uh, league championship and the championship tournament and five of our players from that team were five of the nine starters on the all-star team that went to try to win the state championship. Five of our players on a team that just going to throw the ball, catch the ball, and hit the ball. We were more than half of the all-star team. Two championships in one year. I wonder what God would do if you and I would just get back to what the early Christians did and just have a basic message and a basic manner. Where are you going? I'm going to church. Well, there's a pandemic. Well, I'm going to put on a mask, I'm going to sit in the car and listen to it on the radio, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to pay my, or I don't believe in paying tithes. I believe in giving this already, God. And I'm going to give my tithes. I'm going to give an offering. 
I'm going to pray for the church. I ain't going to listen to you talk about the church. You ain't going to talk about my man of God. Uh, you ain't going to run us down. You can believe anything you want to, but I'm excusing myself because I but love the church. Jesus loved it enough to die for it. You and I ought to love it enough to live for it. Amen. And you can have my Bible when you pry it from my coat, my King James Bible. When you pry it from help us in these days. Let's get back to the basics and be basic Christians in a world gone crazy. Let's bow for prayer, Father. Thank you for the truth of your word and the power of your spirit. Please. Take the feeble, simple effort of thy servant. Speak thy heart. May we just be basic Christians again. Get back to what the early church thought was so important. Grant it to be so. I pray for this meeting. I pray for this church. I pray for the man of God that will follow this week. And Lord, I pray that you'll do something in each of our hearts and lives that will make a difference not just now, but for all eternity. Grant it to be so. I pray for Jesus' sake. Brother, you singing a hymn. What's the number? Page 81. Page 81. We're standing. We're singing. The pastor's coming. The altar's open. You do business with the preacher. God bless you, sir. Ma'am, thank you so much. Thank you, young lady. What is getting back to the basics? Pray to God I seen that hand back there. Wouldn't there be another? Preacher, pray for me that I won't get sidetracked and confused. Boy, in this world in which we live, when there's so much religion, stuff that's going on. Help me to stay focused. Wouldn't it be another? Just slip your hand up water to me this minute. God bless you. I see that hand, sir. can't help you. That's all I can say. Amen. That was good, basic Bible preaching right from the Word of God. And boy, if there's ever been a day, we need to get back to the basics. This, this day and hour, Brother Robert, in which we live. Amen. Well, thank God for Brother Sidney. Preach, amen, with fervency and preach with a touch of God on his life. I'm excited about tonight. Amen. And we're going to be right back here tonight. Amen. At 6 o'clock, we're going to come back in looking for God to do something. Hey, you come back. Invite others to come. Chad, visitation, 3 o'clock, that's right, this afternoon. So don't forget that, amen. And go out knocking on a few doors. You tell people about revival. Hey, there's no telling what God's liable to do. Hey, tell your sons and your daughters and your family, your neighbor. Hey, invite them to come to church and to be with you in the house of God. Amen. All right, let's bow our head and heart. Thank you for being here. Good to see some folks that's been out a while. Thank you for being here. Amen. Thank God for our visitors being here this morning. And thank God for the sweet Holy Spirit being in our midst. Amen. All right, we're going to bow our head and heart. Jeffrey, if you would, son, you dismiss us in prayer. Oh, my. What a good message. Oh, my. Yeah, put God first. That's right. That's right. What about that? Oh, my. Yes. Sure. Speak to us.